Hi, this is Vince at Discount Inboard Marine. Today we're going to take a look at a Holley carburetor that seems to be dumping fuel uh, at idle and when you shut the key off. So anytime we have that situation, this is pretty much a brand new carburetor. So we're going to pop the front bowl off, look for any problems that uh, may be from the fuel system, uh, dirt, debris, water and the fuel, anything like that. So we'll go ahead and start there. If you tap these bowls, this is the front bowl, if you tap those bowls off you can usually get them off without disturbing the gasket and these are reusable gaskets. Once we have that off what we're going to do is inspect this uh, for any dirt or debris or anything that would show us that there's a fuel system problem. You may be able to see a little line right here on the float that tells me there was probably water in the system. Water got into the carburetor and these carburetors do not like water coming in. Also you may or may not be able to see a little film inside on the bowl so uh, there was some contamination in the fuel system and that's probably what's causing our problem. The next thing we're going to do is pop this metering block off and you can see there's a little plastic piece here and you want to make sure that gets into the same position when you put this all back together again. Uh, same thing, you can pry these off and get these metering blocks off. This is where your rich lean screws are. Uh, the power valve is in the metering block. Here's your power valve. Here's your rich lean screws and these are your jets. Uh, you can see this is the back side of the power valve and you can see that it's got some signs of water intrusion also. So that pretty much tells us where the problem is. So we're going to go ahead and disassemble this assembly and then uh, we'll show you how to clean it out. You can see there's a little cork gasket you want to make sure those come out with the needles or with the adjusting screws and then the power valve will come out with a one inch wrench make sure the gasket comes with it there's also another gasket here they double gasket these for some reason and you want to try and get that off without disturbing it. You can leave the jets in place, that's pretty straightforward. And then what we're going to do is take some carburetor cleaner and we're going to spray through all these holes and through these adjusting screw holes and uh, make sure all the passages are clear. Okay, so now we're going to take and spray the metering block. This is kind of the heart of the carburetor. So you want to make sure all the passages are clean. You can see the spray come out. We'll do the other side. That's nice and clean. Then we'll do all of these little tiny holes. All the places that this spray comes out of, you want to make sure that it all comes out. It's coming out of here where the power valve goes. You want to make sure all those passages are clear. Everything looks like it's spraying pretty good. We'll do the jets. Once you run carburetor spray cleaner through the metering block, I like to go back and just blow everything out, make sure all the holes are clear. This was where our second gasket was for the power valve. We cleaned that all up. Gasket material out. Then we're going to take the carburetor body itself and do the same thing. We're just going to spray some carb cleaner through all the holes and orifices where uh, the metering block was. And when you do that, you can open up the choke and look down, and these are your venturis. And when you spray 
the front of the carburetor, you'll see the spray come out of the Venturi's and you want to make sure that the spray looks even on both sides. And also down in the carburetor is your spray nozzle and that's when you accelerate the accelerator pump diaphragm will shoot two little streams of gasoline uh, down the throat of the carburetor on an acceleration. So we're going to just spray this out real quick, make sure everything looks good. Once you get that sprayed out again, I like to blow everything off. Once that's all cleaned off and blown out, we're going to go ahead and reassemble everything on the front bowl and then we'll do the back bowl. Okay, uh, now we'll do Okay, we've got the front bowl all cleaned up. We've got the front main body of the carburetor cleaned up. Now we're going to do the rear bowl and that's a lot easier. That comes off. This, these are called clutch head screws and you can use a small screwdriver. Usually, usually you can get those out. And this is a clutch head uh, bit. I actually got this at Home Depot. And then you can pull these screws out. This is called a metering plate. So you don't have a metering block on this particular carburetor. Also, the inside of this bowl looks real clean, so it looks like the contamination was mainly contained on the front bowl, which is, is good and tells me it wasn't real severe. So probably a fuel filter water separator uh, change would be real advisable. And uh, check that fuel filter and water separator for any water inside the fuel system. You want to be careful. Uh, they can be a little sticky sometimes and hard to hard to get off. I'm going to take little bites. The plate comes off. It's nice and clean in there, so that all looks good. Uh, you can take your carb cleaner, give it just a little shot, make sure that's clean, and blow it off. You take the rear bowl. Do the same thing. We'll plug this little transfer hole and then uh, just spray the needle and seat. Make sure the bowl is nice and clean. Blow it out. And again, we'll take our transfer tube. Do the same procedure, just make sure that needle and seat is seating well, cuts the air off. You don't want to use compressed air for this part of it. That's sealing real good, tells me that's all good and fine. We also check the float level on this bottom of the bowl should be parallel with the float. Now this is set a little bit off parallel but it allows the float to close a little bit faster which in this case is not a bad thing. It could be uh, just the way it came from the factory it's close enough. I would rather see it close the needle a little faster. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and spray the main body of the carburetor and when you do these two holes here, you can see the fluid come out here where the Venturi's are. We did the same thing on the front bowl. And just make sure you see an even spray come out of the fluid. And this all looks nice and clean. Same thing, do all the holes. Make sure they're all clear. And we're ready to reassemble everything and then we'll throw it on the test engine and see how it works. When you put the transfer tube back on, I like to get the rubber grommets out of the bowls 
put them on the tube and it just makes it easier to put them back together again. Again, this is a relatively new carburetor and so a lot of times you can get away with this quick clean on them and they'll function just fine. If you get all done, you put it back on the engine and you still have trouble, then probably a rebuild kit would be necessary and you would need to soak these components, disassemble everything, the front bowl, the bodies, uh, your secondary diaphragm, your electric choke, pull all that off, clean it up, soak it, and do a full rebuild on it. So we'll go ahead and get this back together again, and then we'll put it on the test engine, see how it runs. We've got our carburetor on the engine now. We've got our water running. We're going to start the engine and look for any leaks, uh, set the idle speed, make sure our electric choke is already open. I've been running the engine a little bit, checking it out. It runs fine, but you still want to check everything. Check your rich lean screws and you're all set. Let's see what happens. Okay, you don't have any gas dripping down any of the Venturi's in the carburetor. We had our idle speed set at right at 700. The rich lean screws smoothed out the carburetor like they're supposed to. It's a happy carburetor and uh, if you have any questions or we can help with anything on how to do that procedure please feel free to give us a call 803-345-0996. My name is Vince, V-I-N-C-E, and I'm Extension 3. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you have a great day. Bye.